Well, it looks like we are kicking off another day uh, talking about E3, but in this case, we're talking about some potential games that are going to be shown at E3. Uh, in fact, according to a very reliable source, there are now three major games we are going to see at E3. And we're going to dish the details after our intro. All right, folks, let's just look at what's going on here. We have some more details coming in from Samus Hunter, who is a uh, known leaker at this point, a known person who keeps just getting everything right, a clear insider for Nintendo. Just everything she says keeps happening, and she is sticking her flag in the ground, stating that she knows three titles that for sure are going to be at E3 for Nintendo. She had previously stated that she wasn't sure exactly what Nintendo was going to show at E3, but now she's like, yeah, no, these three games are happening. So she put this out on Twitter and she said, I read questions about Splatoon 3's presence at E3. Yes, it is one of the few games I can confirm that will be there along with Smash and the Breath of the Wild sequel, as they are the most involved titles in terms of marketing management. Come on, Nintendo, just reveal these plans to the public. Now, it's important to note that prior uh, to all this, she did state that one thing she had heard behind the scenes is that Nintendo was potentially working on a Smash Bros. tournament and a Splatoon 3 tournament to happen during E3. Now, this tournament wouldn't be public style tournaments where you and I can go on, download demos, and, uh, and join in. It would be more like Nintendo Treehouse style tournaments. So you're wondering, how the hell can a Splatoon 3 get in there? Uh, yeah, it would, it's a Treehouse thing. It'd just be a way to feature the game on Nintendo Treehouse. So she had previously talked about that. That doesn't mean the games won't get additional details and blowouts beyond that. And obviously when it comes to Smash Bros, the news most of us care about is less about a potential Treehouse tournament, more about, hey, let's get a new character announcement because, yeah, and there's been lots of speculation around what that character could be. I swear every single live stream I do, which I stream on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and then we also do a podcast live on Wednesday evenings, uh, I always get asked, what do I want in Smash? And the way I look at it is, Obviously, in an ideal world, we're you know we, we want something like Master Chief in Smash, right? We want something like I don't know. Uh, for me personally, Conquer from Conquer's Bad Fur Day in Smash, uh, or any number of characters, right? Let's get you know let's, let's get the guy from God of War in there. Let's get Alloy from Horizon, right? From Sony side of things, let's let's get Spider Man in there. Like it, it'd be so cool to have some of these big Sony characters, and you could even go obviously with people who've been begging for Geno forever and all that. But here's the thing, I believe that while those are things that we all want, it's far more likely we are going to get the following things. A character from the Zelda series, not sure who, I would pick Groose. Uh, it would also help promote Skyward Sword HD to pick Groose. Uh, they could obviously uh, forego setting the Groose loose and focus more so on something from Breath of the Wild 2, potentially, or even from Breath of the Wild itself. I thought about a swappable champion character where you could switch between the four different champions. Problem is, all four champions are so fundamentally different in how they play. It would be a monumental task, and maybe Sakurai's up for it, but I just don't see a swappable character uh, with, with movesets like that, with how different each of those are. But what I can say uh, would be nice is to see... Uh, you know, someone like Crash Bandicoot get in. I know Activision seems to be done with that game, but we got Crash 4 on Switch, and we got the Crash Team Racing on Switch. So it would be nice to see Crash get some love. It's just one of those classic characters, even if Activision might be done with it. And then in addition to that, uh, the Zelda character. Obviously, it could be other things, and I, you know, for people who want Master Chief uh, in Smash, I don't think having Master Chief in Smash is this big impossibility that isn't going to occur. I think having Master Chief in Smash makes sense. I think Phil Spencer would support it. Halo Infinite comes out later this year. I just think adding Master Chief in is going to make people expect uh, a Sony character because that's now Microsoft's mascot. They're going to want some sort of mascot from Sony, and I don't even know who Sony's mascot would be these days. I mean, we're talking like Nate Drake uh, or Nathan Drake. Uh, Nate Drake, he's a, a leaker. But Nathan Drake from uh, from the Uncharted series, 
Alloy, Spider-Man, like I said, there, I'm not exactly sure. Is it Astrobot now or whatever? Because that's like the packing game on uh, on PlayStation, and there's been VR games for that. So there's a lot of directions they could go here with this. Uh, to me, this is just one of those, hey, we got to do the best uh, with what we got and, and maybe be realistic about our hopes and desires. Now, obviously, in addition to this, they mentioned Breath of the Wild 2. And I feel like Breath of the Wild 2 being at E3 is one of the worst-kept secrets. Uh, although there's not really... Of confirmation uh, from anyone that we're getting it. The only thing we know for sure, according to A.G. Anomu, is that we are going to get Breath of the Wild at some point this year. Breath of the Wild 2 at some point this year. He stated uh, when they talked about Age of Calamity DLC and the Skyward Sword HD announcement, uh, he stated that, hey, we know you want to see this game. We just need a little bit more time, which is kind of what he said last time uh, when he was announcing Age of Calamity. Uh, but Instead of in 2020 when he said, you know, you know, I need a little bit more time. This time he said we need a little bit more time, but we plan to show you news on this game before the end of the year. And he said that this year. So we know Breath of the Wild 2 is supposed to get shown off at some point this year. So why not E3? Now, there's obviously speculation about when's it coming out. Is it coming out end of this year? Is it coming out early 2022? That's been a big debate among Zelda and Nintendo fans for a while as we try to figure out how Nintendo is going to line up their second half of the year and then kick off next year. Because right now, we don't have any dates for anything after Skyward Sword HD. And the closest we got is, well, Splatoon 3 is coming sometime in 2022. Shin Megami Tensei 5 is supposed to come out sometime in 2021. Same with Project Triangle Strategy, supposed to come out sometime this year. Otherwise, it's a bunch of unannounced things. And then you have Pokemon Legends Arceus is supposed to come out sometime in early 2022. And then, yeah, on the other Pokemon side, can't forget about things like Pokemon Brilliant Diamond uh, and Shining Pearl. Those are supposed to come out in late 2021, which we presume is holiday. So there's just a lot of un knowns but that's also what makes things extremely exciting for this e3 is despite all the rumors right the dk game the donkey kong game is rumored new kirby game that's been talked about by the development team and then also rumored to have a couple uh, games in the works for this year and 2d metroid by mercury steam or something there's been all these rumors floating out there but what is so exciting is that despite all these rumors we really have no idea what nintendo's second half of this year is going to look like. I mean, there was one rumor that stated that the second half of 2021 is supposed to be targeted at the gaming enthusiast crowd. And it's like, what does that even mean from Nintendo? I mean, we can look back to 2019 where that seemed to be the case. You know, you get your Astral Chains of the World, uh, Damon X Machina, I can't forget uh, Luigi's Mansion 3, Link's Awakening, et cetera, et cetera. They were really just hitting with bangers and bangers and bangers in that second half, you know, Fire Emblem Three Houses. But... Again, is that what we're going to get this time around? Are we going to get more side games? Are we going to get main courses like Breath of the Wild 2, Breath of the Wild the sequel? Are we going to uh, get something besides Pokemon for the holiday season? I presume we're getting something. What's it going to be? Is it possible that like a Luigi's Mansion 4 is in the works? After all, 3 is almost a 10 million seller. Why wouldn't we get another one? So we're at this crossroads where we don't really know everything and that's what makes e3 exciting is even if these three titles which are right up there on the screen breath of the wild 2 splatoon 3 and something from smash even if it's just a tournament or it is a character reveal is at e3 that's huge but we already know about all three of these games right they've previously announced splatoon 3 shown a trailer will be coming out in 2022. We've seen Breath of the Wild 2 announced two years ago in a brief cutscene-like snippet of it. Uh, and yeah, Smash Bros. is a 2018 game that consistently gets updates. So I think at this point, those are known quantities and potentially should be expected. But like Bayonetta 3 was announced, we haven't seen anything. We haven't seen anything. We just keep hearing development's going well. It's going so well, we haven't seen anything. Okay, and then we have Metroid Prime 4. Yeah, development was rebooted at the end of 2018, but still, we still haven't seen Metroid Prime 4. It was announced back in 2017. So there's just so many unknowns. So what I want to know is, do you think we're going to get these three games at E3? How are we going to get them? Are they just going to be some tournaments besides Breath of the Wild 2? Uh, or are we going to get some legit trailers and new information and character reveals? Uh, and do you, what other games do you expect Nintendo to show? Now, I always say we got to keep our expectations in check a little bit because 
we can expect the world of Nintendo, and then we'll be a little bit disappointed. They tend to have a lot of big games to show at E3, but it doesn't mean they're going to blow their entire load for 2021 at E3. There's going to, going to factually be some major games that come out in the second half of this year that are not at this E3 show. It just happens every single year. So... That also means we're probably going to have a Nintendo Direct later this year that will tease us further on 2022, which there's that. Also, by the way, just to kind of throw this out there, uh, I did kind of probe Savage Hunter a tad bit on uh, wanting to get a date for the Pokemon Presents or Pokemon Direct or whatever they have for a Pokemon event that they have every single June, essentially, before E3. Uh, and she said the last time she heard any sort of date was roughly June 2nd, but she's not willing to be like, it's definitively happening June 2nd. Uh, getting information, she said, from the Pokemon company is kind of difficult because they run on their own. They're separated from Nintendo, including their marketing team, is completely separated from the main Nintendo marketing teams uh, because we all know at this point, Pokemon kind of does its own thing regardless of what Nintendo's doing. Uh, so she said, but she did hear a June 2nd possible date that would be kind of nice because that would spread things out a little bit instead of packing it all into the week before E3. Because week before E3, we already have uh, things like the uh, you know summer game fest happening on Thursday. Obviously, we have our own podcast happening on that Tuesday because we have special guest Camelot 331 coming on. And just so much more. There's just so much stuff happening uh, that... This is just nice to get me get some things spread out a little bit. Plus, it'd be good to get some awesome, epic Pokemon conversations going uh, before E3 and maybe bringing in some of your favorite Pokemon uh, content creators who are way bigger experts in the field to talk about the games uh, instead of just myself as an outsider looking in. It'd be great to get a couple people on the podcast, as an example, uh, to potentially really bring to light uh, what some of the stuff happening at the Pokemon Presents really means all right folks i am nathaniel rubblejance from nintendo prime i'm so excited we are getting closer and closer and closer to the big event uh if you don't know we are putting on our own show there's a link down in the description to the first uh stream that's already set up for june 12th the time of that stream is going to move depending on what's happening uh, with the actual E3 time because we will be live streaming and live reacting to everything that happens at E3. It's going to be a non-stop stream. We're going to have a, a, at least a two-hour pre-show, if not more. That pre-show is going to include giveaways. That pre-show is going to include uh, conversations and expectations and special guests. Uh, we're going to have gaming competitions. There's going to be competitions between me and my co-host, Eric, uh, where the loser has to complete certain challenges, like the hot chip challenge, dressing as Tingle for an hour, uh, on stream all this jazz it, a lot of exciting stuff there and then we have to also uh, keep in mind and consider uh, that we have to have obviously reactions to all this and bring in special guests during E3 while E3 is going on to react and talk about what's happening we have a special guest coming on to talk about a organization that is trying to do some good in the world uh, as we try to highlight at least once during E3 uh, that not only are we trying to give back to you guys coming out of a pandemic, we want to make sure we help those that are even more less fortunate than us. Uh, and there'll be a special announcement in regards to that that I actually plan to even surprise the guest for that with that they do not expect. Uh, beyond all that, I really hope uh, that you guys have a lovely day. Uh, this is so much great news in the morning. We had the Th Zelda 35th video, if you haven't seen it yet. We now we've got this one. Who knows what the hell's happening the rest of today. I do happen to have today off uh, from my job. So this is what we're doing today. Look forward to lots more videos today, potentially. And we'll be live streaming tonight around 8 p.m. Central. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.